General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. Fullback Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. He's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, Cheerios, the cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. No other cereal is like Cheerios, the only ready-to-eat cereal with this wonderful toasted oat flavor. A breakfast of Cheerios with milk, fruit, and buttered toast is all you need to give you go power. That's because Cheerios is made from energy-packed oats, made to give you the vitamins and minerals you need for healthy nerves, good red blood, strong teeth, and bones. So give the whole family Go Power from Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. And so my fellow members of the Civic Betterment League have instructed me to tell you, what a great job you have done as our representative at the state meetings. Well, it's very nice of you to tell me this, Mr. Selkirk. It's really gratifying to know that one's efforts are appreciated. Well, as a matter of fact, Stu, we have put our appreciation down on a little slip of paper. A check? On behalf of the Civic Betterment League, I would like to present you with this bonus which you have so rightfully earned. It is also a token of our esteem for the man who has done such a magnificent job. Here. Yes. A thousand dollars? Well, what are you going to do with all that money, Stu? Well, I don't know just yet. It, it all happened so suddenly, and I might add, unexpectedly. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Selker. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see the expression on June's face when she sees it. She'll be so surprised, she'll probably faint. Well, I hope well, it won't be that big a shock to her. Well, I must be running along. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Selker, and thanks again. <laughs> Ooh. Come in. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, put them on the bookcase, will you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Mr. Irwin. Thank you, Willie. Congratulations for what? A thousand dollars is a lot of dough. How did you find out about it? I just happened to be dusting off the keyhole. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Willie, I'd like to suggest that you don't mention it to anyone. I want to surprise Mrs. Irwin, and you know how news travels. Mr. Irwin, only time I open my mouth is when I eat. Good. Uh. Come in. Huh? Oh, hello, Harry. I just ran into a wonderful deal. We can make a lot of money. We can? Yes. There's a small store building. The bank has a mortgage on it. They're going to foreclose. We can get it for practically nothing. I don't know anything about real estate. But isn't it time we let our money work for us? I'm an educator, not a businessman. Now, listen, let's get smart. There's a tenant in the building. All we've got to do is sit back and collect the rent. Mm, sounds pleasant enough, but I haven't any money to invest. It'll only take $2,000. Oh. I'll get the bank uh, to uh, give us a loan on the balance, see? I've got $1,000 Adele doesn't know anything about, and you can use that bonus check you just got. How did you find out about that? Well, don't forget the bank handles the school's funds. Oh. Well, don't say anything to Adele about it. I want to surprise June. Now, listen, Stu. This is a chance of a lifetime. We've got to start thinking of our old age. And with the money we make on this deal, we can make other investments. First thing you know, we'll be independent. All right, Harry. I'll speak to June about it. Oh, no. Why do that? Women know nothing about business. They have no vision. Do you think I'm going to tell Adele? But I tell June everything. All right. Tell her. But wait a while, she doesn't know anything about the bonus check. Mm. And why surprise her with a measly thousand dollars? Why not wait and surprise her with an annuity, huh? Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful to sit back and collect rents? Yeah, certainly would be. I suppose I should think about my family's future. Then you're with me? Oh, no, I don't know, Harry. 
How, how much rent does this tenant pay? $150 a month. $150? Yeah. $75 for you, $75 for me. Mm. It's not bad, is it? We'll get rich. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, all right, Harry, I'll do it. I'll do it. There you are. Here's the check. This will prove what a good friend I am of yours, Stu. Yeah. Here, you better endorse it. Oh, oh, yes, endorse it. And then come over to the bank and we'll draw up the necessary papers. Huh? All right, Harry. I have to come over in a little while anyway. Good. I'll see. Partner. Partner. Yes, sir. Huh. Hmm. I always didn't want to sit back and collect rent. Hiya, Jackie. Hello, dear. Hello, Daddy. Well, it's good to see you doing your homework. And how is my darling? Now, don't disconcert me, Stu. I'm trying to make it come out even. Well, here's hoping you do. Let's see. A garbage disposal, $135. A new vacuum cleaner, that's $75.95. Washing machine, $240. A new window for the one you broke playing ball with Jackie, $1.75. The house painted inside and out, $538.58. I still have $13.42 left. I can't make it come out even. What are you trying to make come out even? All right, if you think it's so easy, you try it. How can I try it? I don't even know what you're talking about. Your bonus check. Oh, oh. darling, it's so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Mrs. Selkirk phoned and told me the news. She did. <laughs> I didn't know you were planning on buying all of those things. Oh, how can you say that when I've mentioned them so many times? Mm, I guess maybe I wasn't listening. You know, June, I don't think we should buy those things right now. Really, I don't. Oh, Stu. Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. As principal of a high school, my earning capacity is limited. Now, if we invested our money wisely... Invested in what? Well, I... I don't know offhand, but it's about time that we put our money to some use, made it work for us. Now, Stu Irwin, if you have any idea of taking risks... Who said anything about taking risks? Look, June, there's one thing I want you to understand. Anything I do, I do for you and the girls. All I ask is that you have a little confidence in me. Let me handle things. Hello, Adele. Harry, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> See? He washes dishes. He likes to wash them. <laughs> Where's June? She's in the living room, resting. She had a very tough day shopping. Oh. <laughs> I've got to talk to you in private. What's the matter? Something terrible has happened. I thought you should know about it. Don't tell me our building burned down. Oh, nothing as simple as that, but our tenant is leaving town. Well, we'll get another tenant. It'll have to be our own tenant. What are you talking about? I just found out the fellow owes six months' rent. I made a deal with him to leave the merchandise. We'll owe him the difference. Have you gone crazy? We were in the spot. I thought I was doing the right thing. Look, Harry, I went into this deal because I wanted to sit back and collect rent. Well, maybe this will turn out better. I don't want anything better. Come on, get that apron off. We'll go right down. Now, wait a minute. What will I tell June? I've got it all fixed. I told Adele we were going bowling. I like this less every second. Get your hand. Here we are. Huh? This is our business. A dress shop. Oh, no. I want out of this, Harry. I don't want any part of it. Oh, stop quibbling. You just wait and see. We'll come out of this in fine shape. I don't care a hang about my shape or yours either. I have a job to do. I haven't time to run a business. I've got it all figured out. You only run it part of the time, and then I'll come down and help out whenever I can. We don't know anything about dresses. You learn. That's Thelma. Thelma? Yeah. She looks after our interests when we're not here. Uh, Come on. I want you to meet her. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. You'll thank me for getting you into this. I'll thank you for getting me out of it. Well, don't you want to have any money laid away for your old age? I'll need it very soon. I'm aging fast. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. And you must be Mr. Irwin. Yes, this is Mr. Irwin. He couldn't wait to see the place. It's so nice to know you, Mr. Irwin. Thank you. I'm sure ours will be a very pleasant association. Uh, uh, well, uh, how are things going, Thelma? Well, we've had several women in tonight looking mm -hmm. and two refunds. Good! 
Doesn't sound so good to me. Well, we, we've got the merchandise back. Oh. Uh, of course, we uh, have to build the place up a little. Seems to me we'll have to build it up a lot. Will you stop worrying? Stop worrying. I have a hunch I'm just beginning to worry. Why did the former owner leave town? Too much competition. I see. And to think, when you walked into my office, I was a happy man. So we're faced with a little challenge. Think of the satisfaction we'll get putting this place on its feet. I'll sell you my share of the satisfaction cheap. Look, Stu, I only let you into this because you're a very good friend of mine. Something tells me I'd be much better off if you hated me. Now, maybe you're worrying unnecessarily, Mr. Irwin. True, we have our little problems to work out, but uh, if we put our heads together, it should be fun. Yeah, should be fun. <laughs> thousand dollars down the drain. June finds out about this, she'll kill me. Hello, Parisian shop. Thelma, this is Mr. Irwin. How are things going? Not so good, huh? Mr. Johnson been in? No, I called the bank. He must be out somewhere. All right, I'll call you later. Bye. Mm -hmm. oh. Good morning, Stu. Oh. Well, I was just curious about June's reaction when you gave her the check. Oh, well, I didn't give it to her. You told her about it, didn't you? Your wife did. Oh. Oh, well, you know how women are. They've got to blabber. But I hope you'll have as much pleasure out of it as we had in giving it to you. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me, Mr. Irvin. Yes. Mr. Johnson phoned while you were out. Oh, he did? Yes. He said for you to go over to the joint huh. after school, and he'd be there later. Uh -huh. And Thelma would take care of things in the meantime. Well, thank you, Will. Thank you. Um, we're going bowling again. <laughs> oh. Yes. Well, I just dropped in to see how things were. Oh, yes. See you later, too. Yeah. Goodbye. Uh-huh. That dress looks very well on you, madam. Do you think so? I don't know. I don't think it does a thing for me. Don't you have anything else? We just received a new shipment. In fact, the dresses aren't even unpacked yet. I'll get them. All right, I'll be changing. Hello there. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you, Mr. Irwin. Oh, think nothing of it. <laughs> well, you might as well make yourself at home. Oh, yes, of course. I'll have those new dresses unpacked in just a moment. Irwin. Yes? We haven't sold a thing all day. Maybe we'd be better if you and Mr. Johnson just closed this place up. Oh, well, I can't do that, Thelma. I'd lose my investment. Hmm. Well, they seem to be doing all right across the street. Why can't we run a sale? Our competitor cut prices. Why don't we undercut him? It might do the trick, Mr. Irwin. I'll have a sign painted to put in the window. I can paint it and we'll save that money. Besides, there's no time to lose. You'll find everything you need in the workshop. Good. My partner here? Well, he's in there painting a sign, Mr. Johnson. We're going to give our competitor a run for his money. The price war is on. Good. We'll fight him to a finish. Oh, I better get those shipments unpacked. Yeah, I'll give you a hand.
Careful now. Oh. 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 oh, Mr. Johnson, you have such strong, powerful arms. Yes, uh, that's what I've been told. There it is. Oh, hello, Harry. Look at that. Oh, that's fine, Stu. <laughs> I'll put it in the window. Oh, good, good, yeah. good. I'll get down this new shipment. I'll see we're going to need it. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, Stu. Take that. Having a sale across the street at the Parisian. Look at 25% off. That's a real sale. Come on. It worked. Well, what do you know? Now we can go to work. Yes. I want something in a cocktail dress. I would like to see something in an afternoon sure, frock. Well, just a minute, ladies, please, one at a time. Will you wait on me? Of course. Yes, come right there. Could I show you something, madam? I would like to see anything you have on sale. Oh, well, everything's on sale, 25% off. Oh, and, uh, yes. I'll be with you just as soon as I finish with this lady. Yes. Oh, well, let me, let me show you. Here. Yeah. Look, the elite's giving 35% off now. And they've got just the dress I wore. 35% off. That's wonderful. Never mind, I've changed my mind. Uh, but here's a nice blue, madam. That's taking unfair advantage. He's undercutting us. What do we do? I'll change my sign. This is the last one we have, so if you want it, I'd suggest you make up your mind. I'll see if we have that one you want in red. I'm sure you'll find this a perfect fit, madam. Uh, would you care to try it on? You can see how flattering it is. Oh, uh, pardon me. Harry, did you call Adele? Oh, no, I forgot to call her. I better call June and tell her I'll be late for dinner. And uh, tell her to call Adele and say I won't be home either. All right. Uh, what can I do for you, ma'am? Coming, Mother? No. You girls better have your dinner. I want to wait for Pa. Where could he be this late? I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Stu. We were worried about you. Do you know what time it is? I know it's 9 o'clock, but there's nothing to worry about. I just got tied up, that's all. I'll tell you about it when I see you. Goodbye. Where is he, Mom? I forgot to ask him. Come on, girls. You have to eat your dinner. Oh, hello, June. Come on in. Hello, Adele. I have a message for you. Harry won't be home for dinner. Huh. I expected that. I've been calling you all afternoon, June. I have something very important I want to talk to you about. Well, I had to stop at the dentist or I would have been home. I have something I want to talk to you about, too. Well, maybe you better say what you have to say first. No, after you, Adele. <sighs> well, I... I don't know just how to put this, but June... If your best friend's husband was carrying on with another woman, would you tell her? Yes, I believe I would. I think a good friend would do just that. Uh -huh. Well, it isn't easy. A wife is always the last one to find out about a wayward husband. Still, I think she should be told. I know I'd want to be if I were in that position. So would I. Today, I dropped into a dress shop, and here was this man holding this woman in his arms. Oh, so you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you, Adele. Then you know. Yes, and I feel terrible about it. Well, I... I must say you're taking it wonderfully, June. Well, it was quite a shock. I'm afraid I wouldn't take it so calmly if our positions were reversed. If I were in your spot, I'd break Stu's neck. Well, what's he done? Well, that's what we've been talking about. I saw Stu carrying on with this woman. 
Oh, that wasn't Stu. That was Harry. Well, I, I think I'd recognize my own husband. It was Stu, and he was holding her in his arms. But I saw Harry, and he was holding her in his arms. Are you sure? Well, maybe she's going for both of them, playing one against the other. So that's why they didn't come home for dinner. June, we'll put on our things. We're going shopping for a couple of husbands. any further. We're selling things below cost as it is. Well, let's go home and get a good night's sleep. I don't think I'll ever be able to sleep again. Oh, we'll think of something by morning. You wait and see. Oh, well, I hope you're right. Good night, Thelma. Good night, Mr. Irwin. Good night, Mr. Johnson. Good night, Thelma. Come on, Stu. something for you ladies? Where are our husbands? Don't try to deny it. We know that we're here. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Mrs. Harry Johnson and this is Mrs. Stuart Irwin. Oh, I'm very happy to meet both of you. But they were trying to keep it a secret. How did you find out? We're not as stupid as you think. If you know what's good for you, you'll keep away from our husbands. Oh, well, I, I'm afraid that's impossible. You see, uh, I work for them. This is their shop. Their what? You can't be serious. Oh, but I am. You see, they wanted to get into a business on the side. I think they got into the wrong business. We've been having a price war with our competitor across the street. Why, well, we've been practically giving merchandise away. We've been undercutting each other. He took the last cut, and we couldn't take any more. Well, I don't know anything about business, but I do know a few things about women. Adele, we have work to do. But our husbands are not to know that we're going to pitch in. We'll see you in the morning. All right. Good night. Good night. That's just what I was telling Lois. Of course, if you don't mind seeing your new dress coming and going at parties, it's all right. But as for me, I prefer an original model. That's right, Ruth. The Parisian dress shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know Mrs. Selkirk wants it, but maybe if you hurry, you'll be able to get it. Yes, that's right, Terry. Oh, I'm telling you, it simply scratches. It would look dreamy on you, just dreamy. Oh, I, personally, I don't like cheap clothes myself. I always feel more dressed up if I buy something better. That's the dress I was telling you about, Lily. It is lovely. It makes you look as slender as a reed. I think I'll take it. Here's your package, Mrs. Johnson. Call again. Thank you, I shall. Oh, Terry, it's dreamy. You'll be simply a sensation of the prom. It's adorable, Andre. He's headed his way, Mrs. Earp, with Mr. Johnson. And we're leaving. Joyce. We'll go out the back way. They're alive. Look at the customers. Yeah. What is this? Excuse me. What are we doing? Paying them to take the dresses? No, Mr. Irwin. As a matter of fact, we've raised our prices. I told you we'd think of something by morning. Well, you must have stayed up all night. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk to you two gentlemen. Yes? Excuse me, please. There isn't room on this street for two dress shops. I have a proposition to make. I want to buy you out. 
Oh, I'll make it well with you a while. Well, I'm not so sure we want to sell. As you can see, we're doing a flourishing business. I don't think you'll turn down this offer. What is it? Yes. What is it? Well, uh... Hello, everybody! Hello, Daddy! <laughs> Hello, dear. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the first time I've seen you smile in several days. June, I want you to get all of those things you've been planning on. What? You know, the washing machine, vacuum sweeper, garbage disposal. Oh, that's wonderful. But I thought your bonus was a thousand dollars. Well, I made a little investment. Well, you doubled your money. It isn't difficult if you use a little initiative and ingenuity. Well, what kind of an investment did you make? Oh, just a little investment. Like a dress shop? <laughs> oh, Sue, <still> you're wonderful. <laughs> Hello, I'm Betty Crocker. I guess every family has its own kind of problems, but certainly baking a cake doesn't have to be one of them. You don't have to be an expert when you use my cake mix. Take my newest flavor, Honey Spice. The men really go for it, and so will your bridge club. A perfect cake. You be the judge, or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and get your money back. Anybody can make a cake like that, even your youngsters. Just add water and two of your own fresh eggs. Those fresh eggs keep it moist and tender to the last crumb. Not that you'll ever have any crumbs left over. A Betty Crocker cake mix cake is high, light, better tasting. You know, even your very first cake will be perfect with my Betty Crocker cake mix. As a matter of fact, that's why I can safely say, I guarantee a perfect cake every time you bake, cake after cake after cake. That's right, you do get a perfect cake with Betty Crocker cake mix. And if you don't have time to bother with fancy icings, try this quick and easy topping. Spread a blanket of whipped cream over Betty Crocker gingerbread. Then spoon drain fruit cocktail over the top. Or make a shortcake of whipped cream and frozen or fresh berries, vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce. Looks wonderful, tastes wonderful. Why not bake your own perfect cake, Betty Crocker perfect, right now? Be with us again next week when General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father.